Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos, you Land Rover lovers. Today in this video we're going to have a look at our engine overhaul, but we're going to start at the basics with the oil pump and do some measurements to see if it's okay. Ideally, first of all, it would be better to check the oil pressure with the engine running first before stripping. Unfortunately, in the real world it's not always possible. In the workshop data it will tell you what the pressure should be at normal operating speeds, so you can see that highlighted there. It would be advisable before you take the engine out of your vehicle or you go and buy one if you can is to uh, check the engine oil pressure. This will save you a lot of time. And so basically what we do is get the engine to running temperature and then check the pressures. Okay, so we're looking at somewhere around about 55 PSI and this is, well on this engine, it is up to spec. If the pressure is under bar, it could be a warm pump or pressure relief valve spring worn. Before you ask, the engine oil pressure tester is PM1288, available from Paddock Spares, and the link is below this video on YouTube. Right, so if you remember in our last episode, we uh, gently tapped off the oil filter. This is a vital component. We shall be looking at this in a minute. And also the oil strain and pickup pipe is a vital component along with the oil pump which is um, driven by this crankshaft nose and you'll find it in here which is on the timing case okay so we're going to strip this out and measure it handy piece of equipment is this oil spy which is uh, we've tested a bit of oil from the engine oil spy available off the internet and basically we can have a look to see if we've got any diesel issues or any um, head gasket issues. In this case we haven't, which is good. 300 TDI uses a uh, disposable canister filter. Just be careful when you've stripped, it's still got loads of oil in it. Right, so the um, warning lamp switch is here. And this is also where we'd screw our pressure gauge into. Okay, so this part here is where a thermostat will live. Oh, hang on, I've just got oil dripping from somewhere. Basically, this is the uh, outlet to the oil cooler where a pipe would be situated. Now, when we've stripped this, it's two bolts, and then we can lift this part of the housing out of the way. There's no ring under there. And then you'll see that there's a thermostat here, which is a wax pallet type. If you've never seen one, then I'd go ahead and change the one on your engine. They are fairly reasonable from uh, bad Spares and go under the name of Oil Thermostat Assembly for 300 TDI. Right, so we're going to chuck this. In here, we also have a spring and two washers. Make sure that these are uh, not missing because they'll need to go back. Don't have too much of an issue with these at all. Okay, so once the uh, components have been stripped off, you can then remove the gasket and uh, clean the housing very thoroughly with a paraffin. Okay, so making sure there's no gasket remnants are left anywhere in the gallery at all. It's a very simple component, so it can be put back together with a new thermostat. O-ring should be found in a gasket set or the bottom gasket set. All right, just get the oil off my uh, gloves, and then I'll show you about this pickup and strainer pipe. Right, basically what we inspect for is any cracks, making sure that when we clean it that this strainer has no debris in it whatsoever, that the brackets are in good condition, that there's no bends, nicks, cracks or anything. Mainly the crack will be about the joint, if anywhere, and it has an o-ring which um, seals here, which is on the front cover. Front cover also has the oil pump I've already told you about, which is in here, and this is the pressure relief valve. Okay, you can see the pressure relief valve has a spring, and it also has a plunger, and we need to undo this cap to remove it. Now, ideally, it'd be great if you could just use a screwdriver and unscrew it, but I'll just quickly undo this and uh, show you the spring and the plunger that's behind. You can take this out, easy enough, and the plunger is sat in here. Okay, so gasket scraping, you, know, you could use a hob scraper with a sharp blade or a stiffer um, tool. Uh, you could also use a soft wire brush for getting the last bits of the debris off. However, whichever way you do it, you do not want to damage the aluminium, so just take it easy. Okay, so basically scrape all the gasket off front and back. And on the bottom here, you have RTV silicon where the sump was glued onto. 
Okay, one thing that's important is to check the casing. You can see somebody's actually used something like a chisel to take the sump off. Um, that's not too much of a problem because silicon works on here. Basically, with the seals, I leave them in because I've always got the numbers here to tell me which seals I need to fit where. Okay, they can be removed last thing before refitting new seals. Okay, so the casing, now these can crack. Aluminium's not that versatile, and it's not that super, but it is flexible. And when checking around the casing, you want to make sure that the webs, there's no cracks whatsoever. A um, bit of corrosion up the top there is not really an issue. That's fairly dirty. Um, things like this, um, where your webs are, it can crack around this area, especially where your timing belt idlers are. And then down here, which if you look very, very carefully at where the crank area is, this is something to pay particular attention because um, this can be where oil can leak from if it has got a crack. These bolts here as well, if somebody screwed in something that's too long, can crack through and that will cause an issue or weaken the casing at that area. So it's just a few things to keep in mind. Okay, so the oil pump casing here, we're going to take the back plate off and I'd advise using a very good fitting screwdriver. Just release each of them and then unscrew them afterwards. You want to make sure that you don't lose these so make sure you've got a good receptacle. And this should be uh, siliconed in but it's not. This particular one has no silicon on this side. And just incidentally um, you can see the scoring on here. This would have been the uh, thrust on the oil pump to the plate. We'll check that later. Okay, so you have your oil pump here. Now, uh, this is different to the T 200 TDIs and the earlier ones. Basically, what we want to do is mark the relationship between the casing and the outer rotor and the inner rotor to the outer rotor, okay? Now, I've just given them a scratch, but you could use a pen and uh, basically you've got to make sure that when you put them back together that they fit in exactly the same place if the rotors are in good condition but we've got to check these first anyway um, dismantling them we can then check the condition to see if there's any scoring if there's bad scoring then the pump probably would be scrapped along with the housing itself so take a damn good look um, right so I'm going to put these back into place and then we're going to do some measurements on these. It's actually quite vital that we uh, check the condition of the pump because this will determine how much money we're going to spend. Right, now I've clamped this in the vice and not on the gasket faces, okay? So you can see that. This um, pressure relief valve cap or the spring cap is a real pig. I could use a stronger word, but it's so wide that there's no screwdriver big enough and um, if you put an edge on the screwdriver it slips you cannot undo it this way it's got a little bit of loctite on it so we're going to have to resort to a, a little bit of shock treatment and using a soft hammer and uh, a chisel is just give it a glance okay and that should come undone all right um, well you see that it came undone so now i can unscrew it the spring in here and the plunger, we're going to have to get out and check for the condition of them and measure the spring length. Okay, so we've got the spring out and the plunger is in here. So what we need to do is reach in, grab it and pull it out. Obviously, unless you've got sucker fingers, we'd be wanting to use a pair of needle nose pliers, which are perfect for the job. So we have the plunger and you see which way it's fitted. Once the plunger has been cleaned up along with the spring, you can check the condition of it. You can see where it's slightly shiny, that is where it will indicate where. If it happens to be shiny all down one side, you know it's pretty well worn. Use your finger to feel for any lips on the inside where it actually lives. The next thing to do is to check the spring length. Now this is a free spring length and uh, I'd use a pair of vernier calipers for this. Free spring length in the manual is here which is a 68 millimeters and this is meaning that it's in a non-compressed state so we can measure this and unfortunately it is actually that much shorter than what it should be which to me brings up a little bit of suspicion it's not right because looking in the data part of the manual it says full length is 51.6 millimeters 
Either way, this spring is at 45, so it needs to be replaced. Looking in the workshop manual, it shows that you've got three feeler gauges. In fact, you do not need three feeler gauges. It's three different measurements. So the rotor end float we're going to have a look at first. And we're going to check, first of all, the body for any particular damage that would affect looking at the end float along with the cover plate here, which is not badly scored. Any deep scoring would render the components that are scored completely unusable. Minimum measurement here, 0 0.026, is very, very thin. It's almost, well, it's cigarette paper thin. And I don't have a feeler gauge that thin, but I do have one that's 0 0.04 of a millimetre, which is fine. It's within the uh, specified tolerances. Now, what you need to do is get yourself a machined flat edge and then put it on the rotor housing. Then measure between the flat edge and the rotors to see what gap you have. Now, I have a 0 0.06 which is well within tolerance. Now the inner and outer rotors have a different tolerances, but they are the same. Minimum is 0 0.025 again to 0 0.075, which, okay, 0 0.8 is the closest I've got. So if it's more than that, then the pump is too warm to be put back in service. So we'll check between the inner rotor and the outer rotor and that's more than 0 0.08 okay and the outer to the outer casing or the rotor housing is also larger than 0 0.08 now Houston we have a problem here it's uh, worn too much so I'm just going to check to see what actually the tolerance is and um, 0 0.15 of a millimeter is double what it should be and yes, you can see that that just fits. So with the feeler gauges, we've actually just condemned the rotors on the pump. Okay, so the oil pump is no good for putting back into service. So you can see the thickness there on that. Um, that's well out of tolerance. So these rotors and possibly the housing as well. Um, I just need to check to see where the wear is on this and it does actually look quite worn. What we need to do is put another set of rotors in here and see if the casing itself is worn but it doesn't look it from here. Apologies for this being so long but basically in summary what we have is a pressure relief spring that's too short either way whatever information we have and hopefully when you're doing this measuring your rotors on your pump that you have your pump within tolerance, okay? This is a very important measurement because this is the heart of the engine. If you have a bad oil pump, you will also have a very worn engine quickly. So the motto basically is when you're doing an engine, expect the worst and anything that you find that's good is a bonus.